mean, we... I know, it's fun. Hey, welcome everybody. So today we're going to talk about a dragon's uh, tier list. And I made a video about giant's progression a while ago, and I wanted to make a dragon's progression video. And then I had this thought that I should make a visual um, for people to kind of see what they're looking at in terms of where you start in the game and where you finish. So here's what we've got here. Um, on the y-axis, for those those of you learning in summer school, the y-axis is risky to safe, and the x-axis is slow to fast. And so in theory, your best units are going to fall in quadrant three. Is that how it works? Is it upper left and goes around? It's weird. Anyway, math. Um, this quadrant here, they're safe and fast. So I think Garrow is really, really good. Chilling, also really good. And then here's a Sig. This, this tier list is nat 4s and farmable nat 5s only. So we're, we don't have like Taor, um, things like that. So farmable nat 5s and nat 4s. So down here in the bottom left, let's zoom in. Whoa, that might be a little too much, but that's okay. Um, these are going to be your starter dragons teams. These are slow and safe. If you want to complete dragons, you use these monsters. Amon is only there because that was... Uh-oh, you can't really see very well. Sorry, guys. Hold on, let's scooch out. Amon is only there because I started with Amon personally, and I, I I really like him. I keep trying to tell people that he's good, but <clears throat> no one really believes me. He he survives the mini boss. If you're having trouble with the mini boss, he can't be cooled down. You know, like he'll keep healing. He doesn't care what what Zyros does to him. So if you're having trouble with Zyros, Amon's okay. That being said, it's probably not great advice to tell you to build Amon, but that's what I did back in the day. Um, I had used Amon in my first Giants, my first Dragons, and my first TOA Normal Clear. So I'm, I'm unnaturally into Amon. He's great. Um, Emma is probably the slowest, safest monster. She's water, so she's got elemental advantage against the boss, which means he's not going to hit her as hard. Um, and she's got a shield. She's got a heal. She's, she's got all the things. She's great. Um, working your way this way, Chisun was a good uh, piece of advice from a viewer on Twitch. A lot of people might use Chisun in an early team. Um, she's You need her super tanky since she has elemental disadvantage. And I think the only wind unit on this list, yes, um, because of elemental disadvantage, you don't want to bring wind units to dragons. It's not a good idea in general. But since she's wind, she'll tank all the hits from the fire monsters. And so that might make your squishier um, fire and water monsters survive a little more. It's kind of the same theory as using a light monster that's tanky in Necro, because it's taking the hits from the dark monsters. Okay, um, Kona, super safe. she has got the cleanse. Cleanse is great. Um, Megan is a great early monster. It's got the buff removal, the attack buff, the defense buff. A um, lot of good things. The dots, if you can get the dots through, so Megan's great. Um, I've not used Miang in Dragons, but since everyone has her, I could see her being a choice. She's got a heal. She's got buff removal. And then we move on to units that might stay in your team into the fast stage, but they're still safe. So Vero and Bella might stay into your team when you start adding things like a Sig or a Lapis, stuff like that. So I've left them down here in the safe zone, but they start moving up into fast. I think when you cross the line into, okay, now I'm going for speed teams, you're probably letting Vero go. You're probably sitting Vero out. So that's why he's down here. Um, he's a little bit slower. This mid-range Theo, what Theo brings that is nice is the defense break and the ability to live one extra turn. Unfortunately, since a lot of the damage is dots, you know, that turn might just be dying again because he'll die to a dot. But he's, he's pretty fast and he can take one big hit. Sig, fast, safe with the leader, with the new buff, a um, little bit of crowd control in the waves, and does damage based on enemies' max HP, so does quite a bit of damage for an early, an early player. Um... Chilling. I used Chilling for quite a while in my first safe speed team. Chilling's an interesting one because he'll give you the crit and the speed buff, which is great. You can, you know, build your monsters accordingly with less stats. Um, the first skill, though, is what makes him so safe. It's three chances to remove and slow, uh, remove buffs and slow. And if you can put him on revenge, you can put him on triple revenge. Um, you've got some options there. I actually built him slow and as a damage dealer. Um, which worked pretty well. He, the runs were actually a little bit faster with him slower because his animations, maybe maybe it was just when I did it, but his animations were so slow that you wanted him to do stuff, but you didn't want him to do it too often or you'd have to watch him do it over and over. Garrow, I, I hesitate a little bit to put 
to heavily suggest Garrow. An end game Garrow is a great choice, but you need good vamp runes, or he's not a good choice because you need him to survive the hits from the dragons, the dragon, <laughs> the dragon, and you need him to heal back up all in the same basically turn. He takes a million turns because he keeps dying over and over. But if he dies for real, then you got a problem. So this is a good end game speed choice. It's sort of a, an alternative to a Leica and maybe even better than a Leica. I would say maybe better than a Leica. So he's down here. All right, let's move up into the speed teams for the speed demons. Um, it's I, I hesitate to advise going for a speed team before your, your towers are ready to go. So if you think about it, if you haven't maxed your water tower and your attack tower, you're hitting with like 40% less attack. So be careful, you know? Be really, really careful. A lot of people see the monsters, and you can build the monsters, but if you haven't done the towers, you're not going to hit as hard as people you're you're basing your team off of. So if it's not working, and you've made a Tark, or you've made a Yaku, or a Lin, or whatever, don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. Your stats might be exactly the same as someone else, but your towers are holding you back. And that's another thing that really makes a huge difference. Like, if you're you're going into a fight with 20% less, less HP, 20% less crit, like, or crit damage, you're in trouble, you know? So be careful. Be careful with this speed stuff. Don't get too anx anxious to uh, to jump right into it. But let's look at them anyway, because, you know, people want speed teams, right? Tark is, I'd say, pretty risky, but pretty fast. Lin, I have not used, but a user said that it's super risky, super fast. It's all or nothing. It's a one-shot. You either win or you, it dies. Um, moving down... Galleon was an interesting one to place for me because he's absolutely fast. Like, he's in all endgame speed teams. But I guess he's risky. I don't know. It depends on how you build him. I like to build him as a damage dealer. And if he takes a couple hits, he's probably going to die. The... Oh, gosh. I used to know her name. Fire Elemental. Kali. Kali. Um, can work. Risky fast, but also needs endgame runes. This guy also endgame runes. Um, Verd. It's going to be in, like, all speed teams. I've tried lots of leaders. I've tried Perna, I've tried um, Sig, you know, Vero, stuff like that. And Bird, I think, is just the best leader. Um, he's he's fast, he's endgame speed, and I'd say he's as he's not really that risky. Like, in terms of speed teams, everything's a little bit risky because you don't have a healer, but I put him I put him right there. Stella also, a less risky option that does a lot of good things. She'll reduce reduce the bar, she'll brand, she'll defense break. Um, yeah, Stella's Stella's really good. <laughs> Really, really good. Okay, and then to me, the end game dragons is these girls right here, the blue blue ladies, the boomerang and the chakram. I put Shayna up here as well because I like them with her. That's my team. My team is Galleon, Shayna, Talia, Sabrina, and Verd. Yes, I remembered all the names. They're new names. So I don't know them very well, but these girls I think are end game speed dragons. They are. Fast, I think it might be the fastest possible, maybe, or right in there. My, my runs are 40, low 40s. Oh, no, I for, forgot Hua. Oh, Artie, why? Why, do you, why did you remember something like that? Okay, so Hua's pretty good, too. We'll pretend like she didn't exist. So here's here's the, the twins. I think they're endgame. Um, you know what we should do? We should actually run a dragons to show you. So that's what we'll do next. So this image, I'm going to figure out how to upload it to YouTube so you can download it. Um, if you're interested, um, but hopefully it gives you a good sense of where you should start and where you should be looking to in the end, but don't be in any, any rush. I mean, I think you would want to, I think you'd want to farm giants for a long time while you're getting your towers up because giants is an end game dungeon. And as you move into speed dragons, start considering some of these monsters in this range, the safer monsters. Um, some of these monsters, I don't know that I could recommend because they don't have uses in other areas of the game, you know? Okay, so let's let's actually run some some dragons here so we can see them in action. Hopefully I'm all synced up still. Oh no, we're not. Okay, hold on. We're gonna have to sync up the the old iPad. Fail. Fail. Childish, I'm sorry, I'm failing. Alright, here we go. iPad. To screen. Did we do it? We did it! Alright, cool. So now we're just gonna run some dragons. Maybe one or two runs, just to kind of see the end game in action. So here's my team. And now I can look at the chat a little bit. So, hey, Sean B., what's up, man? 
Sean B in the house. Yeah, this is a no nat five, unless it's a farmable tier list. I felt like you start putting in nat fives and it's less applicable to people who need or might use a tier list like this. Like I, I mentioned earlier, like if you have like a Teor, you're probably not looking for advice on, you know, where to use Kali, you know? All right, so here goes the the speed team. One one thing of note is I put a one or two shield sets, I can't remember, just to give you a little bit of survivability through the waves. The shield sets can go a long way. It's not something you really think about, but it's super helpful. So looking at this first, Galleon derped. The twin got the defense break. The other twin self-buffs her own attack, so it makes up for the derp already, and then they just murder the dragon. The red one is the one reducing attack bar. Look at the dragon's attack bar when he dies. That's, I think, the best way to find out how effective your team is, is what's the dragon's attack bar at? If it's if he has not got immunity, you're doing really great. That means you're moving right along. So that's kind of how I, how I would judge um, a dragon's run. If he hasn't gotten a turn, or if he hasn't got immunity, you're probably pretty safe, and that's what makes these girls so safe. We've talked about them a ton, but just pointing out kind of what's going on. So they're murdering everybody, and the fact that they do more damage when HP is low gives them sort of a, an execute kind of a thing, and it's it's awesome. So we'll we'll finish this run, and that'll we'll call that we'll call that a video. Um, but I think I think I think the twins are just amazing. I just talk about the twins all the time. So there's the AOE defense break. We only get the center guy, but then they just murder him, and then we move on. So Galleons move, so we might miss the Galleon on the final stage again, depending on the cooldown. Yep, we got the defense break, though. Oh, wow, he procced. Oh, oh, you know what? We'll go look at the stats after this. That's probably important, too, to know kind of what what endgame stats are. All right, so Dragon down. I mean, they're, they're super, super reliable. So anybody that's on the fence, they're really good. All right. So stats of the monsters, we're going down the list. We've got Verd here. He's on broken, but shield. So he's 100 crit, 151 crit damage. It's pretty slow, pretty pretty darn slow. 114 speed, but he kind of hits like a truck. Oops, I guess I could fix that. Okay, now Galleon. He's on a focus set. Um, 68 crit, 155 crit damage, 178 speed. You want him going first. Speed, crit damage. You can tell my my best runes are on these guys, right? Um, the girls, I think this is the, is this the boomerang? No. Which one is this? Yeah, this is the boomerang. Okay, so I gave her pretty pretty crazy stats, right? So she's on broken, attack, crit damage, attack. Here's the offset. 87 crit, you want everybody who's water, 85 crit, so they always crit. 204 crit damage, and a lot of attack. Here's her, 87, 190. I, I slowed them all down. Last month I had them at 170 speed, and this month I went for a little bit slower because I, I thought I could get away with it, and I think I did. So it worked out okay. I wasn't sure though, you never know. And then fire, boomerang, they're all around the same. The one thing to note is I wanted, here's another shield set, uh, by the way, shield sets. I wanted the fire to go before the waters so that I could maybe get my defense break in there. So there are, those are the rooms. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, hope you guys enjoy it and I will catch y'all next time. Take care everybody.